The last part to understand Uniswap B3 fee is to understand how the fee growth is initialized. So in this video, we'll derive some equations that we'll be using in the later videos. Let's start with some review of what we derived so far. We'll define f out of i to be equal to the fee growth outside at tick i. The algorithm to track f out of i is the following. To initialize f out of i, we set it to the current fee growth f of g if the current tick i of c is greater than or equal to tick i. Otherwise, if the current tick i of c is less than tick i, then we initialize it to zero. And when the current tick i of c crosses tick i, we update f out of i by the following rule. We set the new f out of i to be equal to the current fee growth f of g minus the current f out of i. By following this algorithm, we'll be able to accurately track f out of i. Okay, next, let's review how we calculated phi inside. We'll define f of i lower and i upper to be equal to phi inside tick i lower and tick i upper. We saw that this was equal to f of g minus f of b of i lower minus f of a of i upper. f of b is an equation for phi below and f of a is the equation for phi above, which I will explain now. Let's start with phi below. So we found out that f of b of i was equal to f out of i if the current tick i of c was greater than or equal to tick i. Otherwise, we saw that it was equal to f of g minus f out of i. And likewise for phi above. We saw that phi above was equal to f of g minus f out of i if the current tick i of c was greater than or equal to tick i. Otherwise, this was equal to f out of i. Now, using these two equations, I want to simplify this equation for phi inside and considering the three cases when the current tick i of c is less than i lower, when the current tick i of c is in between i lower and, and i upper, and the last case when the current tick i of c is greater than i upper. So let's start with the case when the current tick i of c is less than i lower and we'll simplify this equation for phi inside. Okay, imagine the case the current tick i of c is less than tick i lower. So here I have an example graph, and let's say that the current tick i of c is less than i lower, and phi growth will be somewhere over here. Again, the equation for phi inside between i lower and i upper is defined to be f of g minus f of b of i lower minus f of a of i upper. Okay, what we're going to do is simplify this equation using these two equations. So going back down, this is equal to f of g will be f of g, how about f of b of i lower? Well, let's scroll back up. f of b of i lower, when the current tick i of c is less than the tick i, will take on this form. So going back down, this part f of b of i lower will be equal to f of g minus f out of i lower. How about f of b of i upper? Well, scrolling back up, when the current tick i of c is less than tick i of i upper, it will take on this form. So going back down, f of a of i upper will be equal to f out of i upper. So when the current tick i of c is less than i lower, phi inside i lower and i upper will take on this form, f out of i lower minus f out of i upper. How about the case when the current tick i of c is in between i lower and i upper? So here we have i lower and i upper. And in between, we have the current tick i of c and phi growth, let's say, is somewhere over here. Again, we want to simplify the equation for phi inside i lower and i upper. So this will be equal to f of g will be equal to f of g. How about f of b of i lower? So scrolling back up, f of b of i lower. Now remember that in this case, current tick is greater than or equal to i lower. So it's going to take on this form. So going back down, f of b of i lower will be equal to f out of i lower. How about phi above of i upper? Well, the current tick i of c is still less than i upper, so it's going to take on this exact same form as the case for when current tick i of c is less than i lower. So going back down, f of a of i upper will still be equal to f out of i upper. Okay, so when the current tick i of c is in between i lower and i upper, phi inside will take on this form. In the final case, what is phi inside equal to when the current tick i of c is greater than tick upper? So here we have current tick i of c, and you can see that it is above tick i upper. Again, here's the equation for phi inside, and this is equal to f of g, 
what is f of b of i lower? Well, this condition is same as this condition over here. In both of these conditions, we have that the current take i of c is greater than i lower. So f of b of i lower will be equal to this f out of i lower. f b of i lower will be equal to f out of i lower. How about f a of i upper? Let's scroll back up and it says over here that f a of i, when the current take i of c is greater than or equal to i upper, it's going to take on this form. It's going back down. So f a of i upper will be equal to minus f of g minus f out of i upper. Now notice that f of g over here and f of g over here cancels out. And we're left with f out of i upper minus f out of i lower. So when the current take i of c is greater than i upper, phi inside will take on this form. In the next video, we'll use these equations to calculate the phi inside i lower and i upper.